Hello, I sped this video up. Um, it's a something I made for students in a workshop and it went about two hours and it's a portrait study I did of myself uh, from a photo. Oil on paper, that's Arsh oil paper, um, taped with artist tape to a piece of foam core and uh, that's a palette uh, made by New Wave Palettes. It's kind of enameled over wood. And I just have it stuck up on my big giant easel so you can see me mixing. Um, so I like to wash this paper with 50% oil, terp, medium, 50 or 60% oil. Um, you can use that uh, lavender spike oil if you want, something non-toxic. Um, so there's many reasons why I like washing the paper like this. Um, it gets me into it. It's relaxing. It's kind of an abstract just experience with colors and um, shapes and tones. And it just doesn't have to stay. It's not about the end result. It's kind of an entryway into um, the creative process. Uh, you can see I probably referenced, I didn't think about it too hard, but referenced those leaves, leaves <laughs> behind me on the shower curtain. Um, that's a selfie I took in my bathroom. Um, so that's uh, what I'm looking at, my setup on the computer. And um, let's see. So I mixed up an average dark. So if you look in the shadow shapes of my cheek or on the left side of my nose there, in the uh, shadows of my eye socket, you can see this kind of warm purpley brown. So that's what I mixed up. You see the Zorn palette there, um, but that's because I was using it for a different demo. So I. As you can see with that pink, I'm using a full palette, which sorry, but you can't see. I just didn't, uh, this was an early attempt at a video, so it's not perfect. Um, so I am separating the dark and the light shapes into just two values. And um, starting with the eyes, uh, that eye socket on the light side of the face. I like starting there with the eyes and uh, like bridge of the nose. There are a lot of little shapes close to each other that skip from dark to light, dark to light. It's easier to um, get those small shapes accurate than big shapes for me. So I kind of wing that first circle in about the right spot and about the right size and um, at about the right angle and then go in to the features and oftentimes it will grow um, bigger than the initial circle but that's okay um, because I have left enough room so um, this is really sped up about 400% it's at at 400% so um, just so you know I paint much slower than this uh, the two-hour version of this video was still sped up uh, a little bit, so um, I'd say this is about three hours of painting, and I don't finish it, so um, yeah, take your time. And this drawing stage, um, step one in my process, on my website there's free PDFs you can download with a more strict, uh, simplified version of my Alla Prima portrait painting process. And you do it with a copy of a master painting uh, by Sargent. So that's how I taught for many years. And as I've moved lately more into coaching creativity, um, rather than teaching technique, I made it available for free, uh, all those lessons on my website. Um, okay, so. We are just not filling in. That's something important to notice. Don't fill in those dark shapes until you have your whole composition um, drawn out. It's much easier to make corrections if you don't have a lot of paint on your paper. Um, you might notice I 
I mean, you might not notice because this is so fast, but I'm using a pencil brush and an eraser brush concept here. Uh, one brush to draw, and then there's a clean, uh, long, flat bristle that I'll use with just some turp. There it was. There it is uh, on it to push a line if I need to correct the drawing. That oiling out of this paper in the beginning also, besides adding color and interest, besides knocking down that white to make values easier to discern, also adds oil on the paper so it's not as um, absorbent and you have an opportunity for the first hour or so while it's still wet to erase if you need to. So. This, I'm kind of drawing a little more loosey-goosey than I normally do in this one, but I think I was just getting back into teaching after a long break. Um, so I tried not to pressure myself too much. If you hold too tight in your intentions, it can be hard to move forward. All right, so now I'm filling in those darks. I was happy with my drawing and then took that average dark, the same one that I used to draw with uh, because I chose it knowing that I would be filling in. Um, I am now um, filling in all those average darks. Filling them in unified is really helpful. Basically, you could switch colors and temperatures as you fill in, and I do that sometimes. Like, I'm gonna do that here with the ear because it's easier to do that, and I can keep track of it in my mind. Um, it's not going to throw me off. Um, but only make your process as complicated as you can juggle it, right? So, um, again, that PDF with the a la prima portrait process with the sergeant copy on my website is a really good one to start with. It's the most simplified version. Um, now here, I'm kind of breaking from that version and I'm starting with some um, high chroma transition um, spots here where the form turns from light to dark. There's often more color and um, so I'm kind of adding that in. So I'm going off the rails here on the uh, simple process, <laughs> I think, for the rest of this. All right, so we're making an average light skin tone now to fill in. I'm trying to look and see what choice, because there's a lot of different tones here on the light side of the face, because we've got two light sources actually in that bathroom. So I'm trying to pick something that is the best possible choice. To keep it simple and accurate. So it's a compromise always. Um, when you're starting more economical with your choices, you're not putting all the information in at once big picture to small picture. So I went for something more red on the nose to start. And I think what I'll probably end up doing is putting that in where I see it and then adjusting my color choice. To fit my needs as I go and fill in those uh, light shapes. All right, I think I'm here just kind of trying to work on the drawing a little bit with those darks because um, 
as I said, this drawing was a little more loosey-goosey than I often do with a demo. And uh, I didn't fully figure out that nose and kind of cement it in the right place. So that's what I was doing there. Again, finding out where those pink tones are. So I'm using uh, long, flat bristle brushes. It's my favorite kind of brush. Um, and if you notice, so that's a vertical palette. That paint is not dripping. Because the paper has oil on it, you don't need um, wet paint to have paint that flows easily over your surface. So keep your paint um, drier, um, you have more control over it. It spreads out pretty easy. All right, going for something a little lighter, a little cooler, a little more yellow as we start filling in. There's a lot of nuance in this uh, photo reference. Gosh, I, looking at it now, kind of want to try it again. <laughs> I think that's why I didn't end up finishing this piece because I got really enticed by all the subtle value and temperature um, and edge shifts in that uh, upper right quadrant of the face which you'll see, because that's what we're going to end up working on. Um, but <laughs> I'm happy to hear myself say I'd like to try it again, because I kind of lost steam on this one, which is why I didn't finish it. And I have a rule to not make myself finish things I don't have interest in finishing. I just allowed this one to be a uh, learning tool for my students, and then uh, I let it die. <laughs> but maybe I will try it again. So you see I'm kind of turning the form on that forehead. Big shapes from dark over there on the left to the light, and kind of splitting the difference, breaking it up into smaller and smaller pieces until I get the form turning accurately. checking in my drawing, adding some darks in there now. Um, I think the reason I started adding darks in here was I realized, so I have a tendency to creep up on those lights um, to have sensitive value shifts and um, oftentimes I can think I have gone to uh, light enough value in my highlights, but um, I'll find that it's all kind of in the dark. That was an early problem of mine where I remember um, a friend said, you need to turn the lights on in this painting. <laughs> so I'd stayed too close to a middle value and hadn't gone light enough. Um, so putting in a dark here before going any further on that forehead um, is a good strategy so that I can make sure I am going light enough. Um, if I do recall, it takes me a minute to figure out what light enough is in this painting. I like to use the palette knife there to kind of correct the drawing. Um, if I'm working kind of like at a straight line that has a little too much paint on it, so I did that. Just one swoop, don't scrape a lot. You'll just smear the paint around.
Don't forget to squint. Um, you don't actually have to scrunch your face up. You can just blur your vision by kind of crossing your eyes a little. Um, but this helps too. I think this is the next day, which is why that the darks look a little lighter. I didn't actually do it all in one sitting. See a different sweater. <laughs> what was I gonna say? I was saying something. Oh, squinting. Um, yeah, you blow your vision so that you eliminate detail and nuance so that you can see the big patterns of light and dark, the big value relationships, the big color relationships, the big shapes. Those are the things that are important uh, to begin with. Um, because if you have beautiful finished detail on a bad structure, it's going to be, you know, what do they say? Lipstick on a pig, which I love pigs. So I don't know if I like that saying, but, um, you know what I mean? Um, I remember my teacher whose name was Norm Nason. It still is. <laughs> um, he said, his analogy or um, story for why the big stuff is important first was that let's say your family member, uh, your mom, uh, your sibling is walking like two blocks away on a sunny day from you towards you. You can recognize them no problem, even though from two blocks away, you cannot see their eyelashes or um, their freckles or um, every strand of hair, but you can see the big shadow shapes on their face, the big shapes, the big colors, the big values. So um, likeness is in the big stuff, um, not the wart with the hairs growing out of it. It's very funny. Um, a lot of times, um, naive attempts at portraiture, which can be delightful. Um, one of my very favorite drawings I've ever seen was something on like Facebook. It was like a repost of a little girl's portrait of her dad, and it had one of those like hairy moles on it. But it was very true. Um, so there can be beauty in artlessness and earnestness, but. Um, if, if you want artfulness, then uh, big stuff first and uh, realize that that is an important part of the likeness. And then if you want, after you have all that big stuff figured out, you can go ahead and put a warts and all. <laughs> all right, so we're building up, building up to the lights. Again, using that palette knife as a drawing tool here. Trying to get all those angles on my eyebrow. An eyebrow is not just a, a arc of a line that you slosh in there. It's got so many different angles and edges and values. It's describing what's happening on the anatomy of the face right there. So it's important to get it right. Next time you're trying to paint an eyebrow, you know, count the lines that you have to um, draw in order to get that shape. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe different angles surrounding that shape. So the paint is getting thicker as I build up towards the lights. Uh, I'm starting to notice that. If you look at where I filled in those average darks, now it looks almost watercolory. Um, and where I'm building the lights up uh, over there at the brow, 
and cheekbone area, um, the paint's getting thicker and thicker, which you can see if you look at the palette, um, the piles are thicker from dark to light. Now, this is practical when you're painting wet into wet painting or direct painting. Um, if you start really thick with the darks, it's going to be a real mess trying to put light colors on top of thick dark colors. They're going to get stirred up and mixed in and you're going to have a muddy um, color disaster. <laughs> so it's just practical to start um, thin and move towards thick. Um, now I, I'm just thinking about stuff I've heard that if you leave the darks transparent, it lends to the effect of three dimensions because the darks kind of fall back. I don't know if I find that true <laughs> because I don't follow that rule. I probably would have to do more study to make an absolute uh, statement about my opinion there, but, um, I've seen some beautiful paintings that have thick paint in the darks, some beautiful impressionist paintings that have like really goopy thick dark paint. So there's no rule. Um, all right. So sorry, I took a break to get my tea. Now what have we got going on here? So I'm just, again, you'll see this process of building up on this um, upper right quadrant of the face, the lightest portion closest to the light source is going to take me a while. I'm just slowly, slowly. Well, I guess it's not so slowly for you since I have it sped up at 400%, but <laughs> um, making some corrections in value and little drawing corrections on the hairline. Ooh, can add some darks. All right, so also this is important for figuring out how light I need to bring up those lights in that section of the face that I'm working on. So time to commit to some darker shapes. And look at here, I'm realizing that I've very much overestimated the size of the hair shape. Um, it's much tighter to the head. So mixing up that. So notice how I just am trying to mix the exact color of that uh, scarf in my hair. And I tested it three times and adjusted before I decided on the color. So that would have felt like a long time if this was uh, at regular speed, like take your time when you're when you're attempting to find the right color or value do your best on the palette it looks right to you test with one brush stroke one just one <laughs> if you can test it next to the color it's going to be sitting next to so put the brush stroke like i did near that dark shape and um if it's not exactly right go back take the time mix better don't say because i remember doing this Oh, I'll push it closer to correct later. You won't. You won't remember. And you'll make other decisions based on the color choice that wasn't quite right. So then it's like a alternate dimensions or something where your one choice led off to a series of choices where this painting is now the wrong color. <laughs> uh, or, you know, so if you care about learning accuracy of color and value, um, shape, all the elements, then you need to take the time to observe and um, record accurately. This is only important if you care about learning accuracy um, and uh, these skills. It's not important because it's important. All right, so we have squished that bandana back down to the appropriate size there and I didn't go and finish everything because the reason I was doing all of that was so that I had more information by which to um, 
guide me and my judgments and my comparisons in this quadrant of the face that I was trying to finish. So a lot of subtle, mid-toned adjustments going on here. Just trying to move towards accuracy. Breaking up the big shapes into smaller shapes. Sorry, I don't have much to say. I'm just watching here. Feel free to ask questions. <laughs> just kidding, I can't hear you. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I crack myself up. Let's see, what question might you ask? I can pretend that you asked me a question. What brush are you using? <laughs> that seems like a popular question. This is probably like a two or a four. Yeah, probably like a size two um, long, flat bristle brush. Uh, it's, um, what is it? I can't remember the brand. I think I have it on my website. I've got on the, if you go under workshops, etc., then there are several little... Um, portals, one of them into free resources for students, and there's a, a supply list, which I should have written this on, or also there's a frequently asked question in that um, portal page, and um, a fact. So somewhere in there I know I've written down what these brushes are. They're kind of cheapy ones, they're not the nice rosemary ones that I uh, organize for my students. They're kind of like the beater brushes that um, don't have as much hair in them and so they're easy to clean and I don't mind. I scrub them a lot, scrub with them a lot so they um, get beat up and worn down really quickly. Princeton Ashley 5200F. Whoa, there it is. <laughs> All right. Not that anyone actually asked. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I just did finding that kind of warm mid pinky tone on the eyelid that really made it look three dimensional, right? So that's what I was saying earlier about when a form turns from dark to light, there's a higher chroma. Um, there's often, I can't say always, I haven't seen every situation <laughs> in a portrait. It's very common. Um, an occurrence of more color as the light turns to dark, as the form turns, or the dark turns to light, however you want to see it. Um, all right, now going for it, <laughs> really building up 
choosing to go much lighter, realizing that I had been um, holding back a little. Holding back or being careful. <clears throat> Either will work. Oh, but yeah, look at that yellow light on the forehead. Ooh, fun. Yep, kind of more going for it now. see how careful I am to keep my drawing accurate. If I made a mistake and pushed it up too far, I'm just taking time to go and correct that. Now back to what I'm doing. Let's see me test that color. Um, you might notice I often will draw a shape and then fill it in. Um, that's how I see those color shapes. It's kind of like, you know, those little kids puzzles that have like the little knob handles on the puzzle pieces and there's only like four or five puzzle pieces. I'm seeing it, it starts like that and then the puzzle pieces get smaller. So um, I'm laying down shapes more than I'm laying down lots of strokes. I don't know if you can hear any other sounds, but I'm sitting next to, I'm sitting in my kitchen and there's parrots in the trees and motorcycles going by, probably a leaf blower. So if you can hear any of that, um, welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> I think that I'm going to put a little music on this for a while and um, I'll break in when I feel like there's something interesting to say.
Well, that was some trippy music. <laughs> I'm using this editing program that has some music built in, but it's all that kind of like <laughs> made to not cause any muss or fuss um, or copyright infringement uh, issues. So um, I'm trying to find a piece long enough because uh, they're all kind of short snippets. Anyway, I'm just learning about all of this kind of stuff, so I'm having fun. Uh, so enjoy the wonky, uh, naive quality of my offerings, please, um, and call it cool. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay, so um, you can see through that break, uh, music <laughs> break, we uh, built up the lights on the forehead and really got a round feeling going there on all the kind of convex parts of my face, working on the cheek now, uh, I remember being uncomfortable with this, I'm like, it is kind of a um, dark fold I've got here in this lighting at, at this age, I normally would minimize that, but it's kind of part of the important part of the character of this uh, portrait. So I'm kind of going to be wrestling with it here, um, figuring out how much information needs to be put in to make it accurate. I think I like this photo because it has so much dynamic color, color temperature with the two light sources and the interesting shadow shapes. Um, It's a lot of information though, a lot of subtle information. Right, definitely noticed that my drawing was off there. Um, so correcting it. I wonder if I even corrected it enough now that I'm looking at it. But it's hard to tell because this uh, angle of this painting is askew uh, because I can't put the camera in my eyeball and show you exactly what I'm looking at. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wonder really had to move that upper lip down. Probably that's why I went and worked on something else uh, for a second to calm myself down. Now that's really important. So self-soothing when you realize you've made a mistake. Uh, so what I do is I'm like, oh, sh crap, sh ugh. Um, darn. Then I go like, okay, well, I'm just going to Take a breather over here in an area that's looking really good. <laughs> See if there's a small little thing I can fix there that's easy to manage and that I have a handle on. And then when I calm down from realizing my mistake, I'll go back and address it. Um, and then um, maybe I'll go work on the side of the nose. <laughs> um, right? It's your painting. You can work on whatever part you want. I'm not saying ignore the inaccuracies you find, and I'm saying um, wait until you are sensible. <laughs> wait until you have a good plan kind of a thing.
Right. I think this video only has a few more minutes because we are not we are not finishing this uh, portrait. So you just get to see me paint a little bit of it. Um, I think I'm just going to build up that cheek and uh, try to get a finish there. It looks a little flat and then um, call it a day on this one. Highlight, ooh, exciting. Um, so, but let that be a lesson to you. Don't put your highlights in until you have prepared the area <laughs> thoroughly, built it up with the right uh, color, value, shape, all that stuff, and then you put them in there and they just make it work. Um, what else about highlights? They're not all the same color. They don't, they're not all the same shape. They don't all have the same edges. They're not all the same value. So when you're trying, when you want to put your highlights in, compare them to each other, and then you will be able to zoom in on the subtleties. You're like, oh, that one's really pink. Oh, that one's really yellow. Whoa, I wouldn't have realized that when I was looking at the whole thing. Uh, this one's bigger. This one has a softer edge. The highlight in the uh, glassy part of the eye is a sharp edge all around, that kind of a thing. So, um, a little pointer there, a little highlight tips. Oh, that looks like it was a good idea. Turn that form of the cheek. Too far. <laughs> reverse, reverse retreat. <laughs> Right, and basically, I'm just what this is is me laying in the big picture, then going in and focusing on one area of interest and bringing the finish out from that point. That's kind of the big picture of what's happening here. Um, and uh, there you go.